Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Holy, 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 The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5, please give it to us. It says, and has made us unto our God. This was a testimony in the heavens that we the redeemed have not only been saved and delivered, but that we have been made unto our God kings and priests. Some versions say a kingdom of priests. Please listen. And it says, and we shall reign on the earth. We have been made a kingdom of kings and of priests and we shall reign on the earth. These two dimensions that the Bible reveals is very critical for kingdom advance in any territory. The revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood. The revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the bible says we have been made both kings and priests and that the system of our legislature must be such that it is covered within the scope of our kingship and priesthood that if we find ourselves living as kings alone there is a dimension of god and kingdom advance that cannot be effectively dispensed and if we ignore that dimension as kings and focus on our priesthood alone as important as that is we will still rob God from finding expression within a territory very important teaching tonight the first thing I want you to know tonight is that kingdom advancement is territorial it's an information that I do not want us to be take lightly and to be careless over kingdom advancement Although the mandate is global, God's system of advancement is territorial. Everybody say kingdom advancement is territorial. This for me is already a big deliverance for men of God. Because sometimes in a bid to take over the world, are we together now? We do not understand that the system of kingdom advance is the progression of God's purposes across territories are we together from one territory to the other God's idea of globalizing the earth with his presence and ideology is not just jumping from place to place it's not just building branches but being able to establish practically the life the character the nature of the kingdom across
across a territory so God's rating for a believer for a man of God for a church although your the scope of your mandate may be global but you are rated based on your efficiency across the territory you have been planted per time are we together now that means that if God has planted koinonia in Zaria in this time and in this season no matter how effective our teachings the external ministrations are across the nations of the earth that is not going to be the parameter for God's rating primarily he is going to judge us based on the efficiency how we have taken advantage of his presence the intelligence he has supplied alongside the grace that has come by the supply of the spirit how we have been able to establish his purposes across this territory so that's the first point i want you to understand tonight that this king priest dimension the system of legislature is highly territorial we live in a time where there is such appetite for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that we love expanding it's a proof of growth but sometimes we can be carried away in the euphoria of the, the, the sociological effect of expansion and miss out on territorial impact where we are unable to to live out the fullness of God's expectation as a portion to a territory it was Jesus that taught us in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 Matthew 5 14 to 16 this is what Jesus said he was teaching and he said ye are the light of the world now when you read and try to understand what Jesus is saying just with head knowledge it can be very deceptive because you see the speakings of God is such that he speaks to men when he's speaking to one man he speaks to the nation in him are you getting the point now I told you that when God speaks to us we must learn the character of God's communication I've taught it here again and again in Koinonia that number one when God speaks to you he never speaks as though he's speaking to a man the first thing we need to understand about the speakings of God I'm just digressing to help us understand God never speaks to men as though he's talking to men he speaks to men as though he's talking to himself number one number two God's communications are prophetic the relevance of his words always transcend the individual who is hearing it the individual hearing that word is only a representation of all those who will be benefactors of that word God never speaks to a man and then limits the blessing of that word to that individual alone he sent a word to Jacob and then that word lighted upon Israel God always speaks to nations in men. Are we learning now? So every time God speaks to you, sometimes you see that the word is heavy because he's speaking in nations through you. And if we do not understand the speakings of God, we will carry mandates that were not part of his scope of dealing with us, thinking because you had it. God can speak to me for instance. And say the vision he has given this ministry is replicating the fullness of God's life across the earth. And I can walk in the deception believing that it simply means that I will pioneer the move of God in every nation. No, when God was speaking, he was speaking to you in me. Are we together now? It is through that prophecy that mandate comes to pass. Now, if you do not understand this dimension of God's speakings, you will end up in error. His rating for men is global prophetically but experientially he deals with men territorially learn this the church in Pagamos the church in Smyrna the church in Philadelphia not the church in the world when the Spirit of God began to speak in revelations from where we would get some of these things he says right the communication was to the whole world but he broke it down to several churches he would come to this church and commend them i have weighed you i have seen what you have done across that territory a and b and c is what you have done in alignment to my purposes d 
D and E, you are in defiance to my precepts. Here's my advice, correct yourself. Otherwise, because of your disalignment, you and that territory will suffer certain things. His system of marking was territorial. It was never generic. He did not generalize his probing. He went to the churches one by one. The church in Pagamos, the church in Philadelphia, the church in Smyrna, the church in um, you know, Ephesus, and so on and so forth. Kingdom advance is territorial. It is true that we are the light of the world. It is true that we are a city that is set on a hill. But then we must understand that this king priest dimension is such that God places men in territories. When God wants to promote men, he promotes men by supplying three things. Number one, a greater dimension of illumination. I'm, I'm touching on many things now. The first way God promotes men is by opening them to deeper access understanding the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom the moment the portals of the heavens the portals of revelation are open to you higher and greater than that which you have seen and known then it's a sign of promotion in the spirit number two grace that anointing that agency capacity in the spirit is multiplied unto you and then number three there is an increase an apportioning of greater physical territories not just spirit, spiritual territories alone God lifts men by increasing the span and the influence of their territory are we together Acts chapter 1 verse 8 very popular scripture Jesus was teaching having resurrected he was having his last session with the disciples who would now be apostles before he would leave and then they asked him a question they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel and he replied by saying it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his care then verse 8 says but ye shall receive power listen carefully after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be not men of god witnesses witnesses unto me then he begins to apportion territories he would have said you will be witnesses unto me all over the world full stop but now he's teaching them because shortly he would be leaving and they would be the ones to start and he's telling them look 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 the goal is the utmost part of the earth but it will be broken into territories first jerusalem then judea then samaria and then it will expand to the utmost part of the earth the first crusade that happened after Christ resurrected, the Bible says that something happened on the day of Pentecost. Now, Peter was preaching. And when Peter began to preach in chapter 2 of Acts, the Bible says that the men were caught to the heart. Listen carefully. And then they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise. This is the part I'm going to. He said, for this promise is for you are you saying now for your children oh dear look at this little boy for you for your children for your children's children then he now says as many as are far off even those that the lord will call sometimes you you, you think that the, the bible is too detailed why would god he would have just said this promise is for everyone after all joel already told us he said, I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh. So why tell us again? It is to you, your children, children's children, and to those who are far off, as many as the Lord will call. God's dealings is territorial. That means a true believer's assignment is to look at the whole world, but to focus on the territory you have been apportioned. That is where your ranking, that is where your marking, that is what authorizes you to be apportioned new spheres, both in the spirit and physically. Our obsession for more, our obsession for increase sometimes robs us from the capacity to be faithful. Write this down. Our mandate. As matured believers 
is to keep the ordinances of God alive across our apportioned territories. Our mandate in terms of territorial impact is to be preservers of the ordinances of God to ensure that every territory has a representation of the presence, the power, the system, the glory of God in that territory. If we fail to carry this out, then we have failed woefully. Listen again, that our mandate as matured believers with respect to kingdom advance is not just to be preachers, not just to be prosperous, that's important, not just to build churches and ministries, but that we become custodians and preservers of the ordinances of God within the territory that has been apportioned to us. That means there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Zaria. Listen carefully. There is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Nigeria. There is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Jos, in Kogi State. And those who are mandated to be preservers of those ordinances are believers. Not just those who advance and win souls, but we are like spiritual librarians mandated to make sure that there is a system that preserves the ordinances of God. This, in my opinion, is one of the biggest mistakes of the Western church. They, they, they lost a part of their assignment. They were obsessed with expansion and they forgot that they were mandated so there was a generation that lost touch with another generation and everybody now is guessing his opinion there is a curriculum of a god that has been apportioned to that territory and it was within the power of all the men of god within that dispensation to walk with the holy spirit and to preserve that truth when a dimension of God apportioned to a territory is lost, they cannot host certain dimensions of him. The church in Nigeria is a wonderful place. You know that I love the church. I love the body of Christ. But I think that we have to trust God in this time and in this season to our idea of kingdom advance is in many ways faulty and we must trust God together as a united body to correct ourselves because there is this obsession for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that but it looks to me like our concept of kingdom advance is establishing our presence is in as many territories as possible whilst there is a dimension of that we are largely missing it because the idea is not just to establish our presence as the man of god or the denomination our idea is to make sure that in every territory there are men who represent portals for kingdom advance that there be no territory that is barren of a true apostolic and prophetic community that represents the individuals who can host God to his expectation within a territory. If we fail to do that, we have missed a lot. If you're understanding me, say amen. One of my greatest fear in life is finding out that I did not live my life and I did not do ministry to God's expectation. It is a very tragic state because the Bible says that our works will be tried with fire. Are we together now? Yes. Tonight, tonight is, is, is more, it's more like a minister's conference. It's a challenge to believers and everybody, but the challenge is, is for those who have been trusted with some measure of spiritual influence over people, groups, territories, we must trust God for understanding on how kingdom advance happens. There is too much guessing in the body of Christ. And everybody believes he is right. 
but our results are showing that there is inefficiency there is inefficiency somewhere there are activities going on there are programs going on conferences going on and nothing is wrong with those things in themselves except that the heart of god's intent is seldom being communicated and that calls for a very serious review of our approach to kingdom advance it is god's desire john chapter um, 15 now and verse 8 that we bear fruit and that our fruit abides meaning your fruit can be lost are we together we have lost several foundational precepts as simple as how to know who is saved and who is not is a serious problem for believers that's a sign that something is wrong with the church that we have lost that ability to be able to see the clarity on who is lost and who is saved the average believer does not know what to do with a new convert is that true the moment you bring a new convert to a believer and say please um, I'm trusting you with the destiny of this brother or this sister you will be shocked to find out that that person may even be a pastor in church that that person may even be a deacon that person may be a worker a leader haven't been around the things of God for many years sitting down under spiritual leaders but not knowing what to do say well I don't know what to do with this person what is step B after giving your life to Christ? How do ordinary believers become spiritual men? Do we know well enough to be committed to someone that you can give someone who just got born again and they trust him and say, look, in three weeks, we should be able to see certain things happen in this life. Listen, let me tell you the truth. If we do not re-examine this, I truly believe that a few years from now the lapse of our being out of touch with these spiritual realities will become clear with all humility and with all love for the body of Christ look at the caliber of we pastors and men of God that are handling the pulpit we are largely ignorant people ignorant of the precepts of God ignorance of the methodology of God we just went through a denominations foundation school or a denomination school of ministry or a denominations requirement for ordination and all of a sudden oil is poured upon you and you are granted access to the souls of hundreds thousands and millions of people who submit their minds and their spirits to the mentorship of a confused person who only had the privilege to hold a mic and we keep teaching them and they swallow everything we teach hook line and sinker the life of the church today is a testament of our inefficiency as men of God the average believer does not have an understanding of kingdom advance at all we don't know we don't care we are not even interested what do you do do you know that's why look at the body of Christ the gap between extremely anointed people and those who are squallowing around the ground is too wide what happened are you getting what I'm saying in a whole territory you may find just two or three people at the upper levels spiritually and then that's all right but the next set of people will be so far apart I have seen churches where in a whole church only maybe two or three of the spiritual leaders are truly anointed or on fire out of a church of maybe 30 pastors 27 of them when they come and hold the mic then you see on the board pastor this apostle this and you say my god who called this guy to ministry what is he saying opinions philosophies cunningly devised fables are we together now and look at the quality of men and women who are being produced it's a disaster that requires a quick rescue many believers do not know God 
many believers do not know the Holy Spirit many believers do not know the voice of the Holy Spirit many believers do not know scripture many believers do not even understand the system of God many believers go to church I agree many believers take communion I agree many believers join in general church prayer I agree but very few believers have risen in spiritual orientation I'm not talking of men of God I'm talking of people who are healthy because of an atmosphere that is healthy the, the kind of threat that the gate of hell is supposed to receive from the church has reduced grossly grossly we see the ease with which darkness looms around territories as though there are no believers there but the bible says you are the light of the world it didn't say you are the noise makers it didn't say you are the discussers you are the light you bring illumination you are a city that is set on a hill i think it's philippians chapter 2 when you read from verse 13 to 16 it starts by saying do everything without complaining or arguing i'm sure i'm right and then it says that he will be blameless um okay forgot it that he may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation what is your mandate among whom ye shine as lights in the world next verse it says holding forth 16 holding forth the word of life holding forth the word of life not cunningly devised fables not the discussions of men are we together we have lost too many things in the body of christ we have lost power we have lost a voice no we, we have to we have been downgraded to a realm of scientology and carnality there must be a drastic upgrade otherwise something will be wrong we will not know the difference between spiritism and christianity or scientology and logic or some kinds of philosophical things are we blessed preservers of the ordinances of god in a territory mandated to make sure every generation tastes the reality of the life of God for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you I will I will reverence you, Lord, for in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, John began to explain to us what he saw. And among many other things, John said he had a voice. And when he turned to see that voice, he saw seven lampstands. Listen carefully. And then John said, in the midst of the lampstand, there was one like the Son of Man. And he began to describe various attributes of him. And then it was God himself who began to give John that interpretation. He says that those lampstands represent the church, the ecclesia, God's body. The lampstands that Christ is found in the midst of them. That light that is also a city set on a hill that should never, never be confused. He says it is the church. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. Christianity is not in danger. Listen carefully. Church is not in danger, but the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? The ordinances, the secrets of God that is a portion to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger. We scarcely understand the secrets of God. The pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace, a man of power and relevance. I want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray. Six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory. seeing fire in the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano that's what I'm seeing in the spirit volcano in the spirit she goes kind of like a volcano please can another drummer sit down please let this gentleman come for somebody this man is Still seeing this fire inside outside I'm seeing it it's like a volcano when when you see God doing these kinds of things it's, it's not show it's not show he's bringing witness he's bringing witness to the spirit of man because the Word of God must have an agency for performance he's, he's working on people I'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding then the fire is dropping on people this is what I see in the spirit this is what I see in the spirit. Shabarakata sikata. Shabregade balakota varianda kosi brada. It's making us witnesses. Testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. The death of a man of God should not end the move of God. There are many men of God, we talk about them. They left with the secrets because there were no men to receive. They left with the secrets. Elisha died. Till today, there are dimensions that would have been seen. Gehazi was not positioned to receive. God, God sees my heart. How that I desire that we become spiritual. 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 Not just supernatural. Spiritual. You must, you must understand the realm of the spirit. And sustain capacity to interact with that realm. Otherwise you will not do much. I promise you. That you must, you must learn how to walk with God such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway there is a pathway that produces that effect it's not an exclusive preserve of particular men there is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of god's presence it's like a perfume so every time you find expression, there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected. That's the realm where doubt dies. That's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away. You, you are not trying to show your anointed. Your presence always introduces a reality. You are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms. And for as long as you are there, you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them. This is not just talk, talk, talk. All this empty talk, we keep mocking ourselves. The Bible says, 
for I did not come to you with the excellency of speech it is not just about oratory no this is not grammar this is the reality the Bible Paul calls it the mystery of godliness that God can be embodied domiciled in an individual who was born of flesh and blood but produced an effect that is strangely supernatural no man is born with the anointing no man is born with the anointing no man is born with spiritual power men follow pathways is an ancient path that has been lost there's too much talk too much grammar too much preaching too much listening to every man of God's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage it, let me tell you the truth if we do not trust God to touch reality we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves you know what what the average young preacher does hold on what the average young man not just your young, young believer who loves God does is he finds the tapes of five six seven eight men of God around the world and just puts them together and listens to them and there's nothing wrong with that but the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed that's a joke if that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man I is a is a big joke a big joke the realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom it's a place where men are made genuinely there there are there are there are capacities apportioned for people on grounds of working with the holy spirit only the holy spirit gives that ranking nobody you can pretend you have it many people pretend they have it but when the door settles down you hear the testimonies Kai, we have lost something serious we must trust God to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of God otherwise some of the young believers coming up the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again and then they get born again and they don't know what to do and it is this same confused us that have been ordained week in week out Everybody is a general overseer. Everybody is a president. Everybody is an apostle. Everybody is a prophet. Everybody is a pastor. Hilarious ordinations happening left, right, and center. And everybody is just holding the mic, and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach. I say this out of love for the body, but we must return. We are losing something. We are losing something very powerful. We are losing something. The ordinances. The precepts of the spirit there is a spiritual formula that men are subject to we are losing it in the name of ministry in the name of globalization in the name of making sure we expand no sir the average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not the average believer does the only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy there is a consolation based on that energy so it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered what, what sort of an, an education is that the average believer studies the Bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt the personal guilt that comes from messages every Sunday that you must be spiritual it is not a personal appetite it's not a search if if that guilt were taken away from us we would throw the Bible in a heartbeat that's why we love using any other thing job or whatever it's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free so we can't say we are not serious so when there is a legitimate crown then we excuse it how the precepts of God are preserved in a territory our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception 
we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry number one the first way listen carefully that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory like our territory Zaria here for instance is prayer write it down prayer the first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer warfare and intercession write it down a lost act in the body of Christ genuine warfare and intercession let me tell you something if we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another I promise you I promise you our our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God brothers and sisters it takes prayer it takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be open over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established warfare Ezekiel chapter 22 it's a long reading 23 to 31 but the verse of emphasis is verse 30 Ezekiel 22 please help us media Ezekiel chapter 22 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying long reading quickly please Just go to verse 30 because at, at the way we are going we are going to waste too much time and I sought for a man among them now this was God angry with a territory that's why what I wanted us to read but because of time we'll just look at 30 God was angry with a territory and was about to pour his indignation and his judgment and God said that mercy dimension of me was still there but I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land for what for the land not for the church I'm talking about taking over territories preserving the precepts of God over a territory a man that will stand for the land so there are men that can stand for the land not just their churches that because of their presence and the business they do with God certain things can happen to territories they don't even know why it came and how it came but a man stood for a land that I should not destroy it but I found did he say I did not find human beings there were human beings many but I found none that man built in capacity and understanding the ministry of prayer let me tell you this believe me hear me church of the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere here in any nation but more specifically in Zaria if we stop praying in Zaria because of some kind of spiritual laziness you will be shocked the way darkness will prevail over the city are we together the ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation I don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of God or a civil servant or a politician the ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint not just need driven prayers alone but we must graduate from realms of just praying give me tea give me bread to taking over lands that because of your presence in the territory 
you subdue the controlling powers the powers that mold the mindsets of people the powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation that you come into a city and find accidents anyhow all kinds of things anyhow and you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory and part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy that you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers that's what men did in the Bible Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah are we together preserve the family of Lot the wife chose the way she wanted Joseph stood in preserve certain things Daniel stood in preserve are you not men who preserve the purposes of God their generation the ministry of warfare and prayer the ministry of warfare Ephesians chapter 6 when we read from verse 10 to 19 the Bible tells us listen carefully the Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might then it says we should put the full armor of God are we together then it says how that we we do not war against principalities and powers but against um, rulers and flesh and blood but principalities and powers and all of that it begins to tell us that in every territory these demonic structures exist hold on let me preach to educated people you know sometimes because we have gone to school because we are rich small money small job we um, and sometimes innocently and truthfully I hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well let me tell you something Satan is many things a fool is not one of them I hear what I'm saying Satan is defeated Satan is old Satan is several things but a fool is not one of them he has the advantage of age time he has studied mankind different species of people have lived upon this earth he has had an advantage of one-to-one -one experience satan has existed before several dispensations before adam's dispensation that brought us into the sea every territory has controlling powers every territory has controlling powers if you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory, brothers and sisters, it's not because the controlling powers are not there. An agency in the spirit, a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression. That's why I said if we stop praying, or if we concentrate on childish immature prayer lord give me tea tomorrow again oh god i forgot to ask for bread yesterday there is a place where you ask for your needs but notice how jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven we reverence you after reverencing him the next thing is your agenda your kingdom come your kingdom come your kingdom come upon a land upon a territory listen the concept of prayer chains, the concept of prayer groups, the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. Now, the, the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying, carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people. What is the name of this ministry of four of us? I don't know who taught us that prayer groups, prayer cells, prayer chains, there should be some structure of leadership. But, you know, we have this mentality and, and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of God. The moment people start praying, everybody is obsessed about who is the leader, who has the protocol to follow him. If, if we do like that, then the devil is going to destroy us. In every city and territory in Zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works I'm a good student of revivals that's how it should work in Samaru there should be units of men and women praying high in Dogo there should be people there has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer 
on a daily basis that's why i thank god for all the groups scattered around and notice that's what satan hates the moment there are people praying some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere preserve us of the ordinances of god gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups now churches start as intentional organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of god are we together that before a man of god starts ministry he has sewn his clothes for one year are we together the offering basket has been made tight envelope is in is is intact what is it we, we better be careful this joke that we keep joking with ourselves every correct ministry starts as same. it doesn't it? let me tell you most men of god that are being used mightily by god today ask them their intention was never ministry they were men who made themselves available when god called them they went back and cried and said god can you use somebody else god will say you are the person you can choose to say no but i'm not using any other person you are the one i will use but now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing and the devil doesn't he, he doesn't stop us because there's whether we are in it or outside it, it makes no difference to him we are still equally ignorant prayer that's how this ministry started prayer every day fire on the altar and I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes and you say let's let's thank God that's Bible study prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things strengthen the understandings of the people the fire continues this is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in eternity let me be honest with you many territories have a lot of repentance to do many families have a lot of repentance to do the prayer lives of many people are under attack when the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer he tells your prayer to become a selfish one so you are praying for hours but you are making minimal minimal spiritual progress i insist prayer chains prayer groups there are many of you here that the body is in your hand it's not carnality and it is not ministry either when you let me teach you something every time you get to a new land before you get accommodation find somewhere where you can pray scan around the back of one tree shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody if that's good, dedicate it as an altar to start with don't go around and say where can i get a hotel and all this rubbish no find a place to pray somebody will join you another person will join you the devil is in trouble once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying apostle but what is the name of the ministry it's not it doesn't have a name the ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of god are portioned for that territory so it doesn't matter where you are the assignment is the same if you leave zaria for a three-week break and you are in kogi for that three week every demon and devil in Kogi state to feel the fire when you return it doesn't matter someone else is returning there so there's fire everywhere say everywhere but now you find out that some places are as cold as ice whereas some other places are on fire do you know whenever you travel for a ministry to a, to a ministry the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar the purpose is to carry like a coal you go and fetch some of it are we together that's why when i see people come from other places i like laying my hands on them it's not just for showmanship so you carry something the goal is to take it back to your territory the same way we do in the physical when they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them what do they do they pick one man is that true or a few people send them abroad for the training when they return back they teach the people not shine with it not shine with it this is where we are missing it train the people one of the biggest killers in ministry is title and that sense of control over men 
if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all, all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of god in many territories do you know there are people as students years ago there are people who had different prayer groups when when all of them were finishing they just left they've gone on other places doing great things but most of us you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper who is really the secretary among these five people we need to define it because the other day i didn't tell anybody to lead prayer and this other lady started leading. when did she join this thing before and you see we, we start politicizing it are you not from madam me too i'm from that one came i don't say from lagos he said we don't want to bring all these kind of things and we kill the move of god with very frivolous childish things another thing that kills prayer is love no, not love relationship hello I keep saying it, there are people till today, they have no business loving anybody. Please hear what I'm saying. All this thing of coming to the house of God for one month and you're already eyeing every sister, every brother, you are in love. No sir, this is not how we train people. We train people to look for God first. Press into God, have a testament, a, a track record, then you can love. Now everybody is, is just you, you come in two days you are praying people are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for for who it is to marry i'm not saying god cannot use those platforms in fact god should use them are we together however your heart if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first most people who become mightily used by god never go there to marry they go there to seek god they pray with all their heart and serve and one day while they are praying god will tell them you see this 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 lady it's even God that will tell them, my son, look, you have been serving me sincerely. This, this one that you are serving, you need a helper. I said, God, I can continue. God, it's me that I say you need a helper. But now, we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven. A prayer request full of, oh God, one time marry and God, what have you done for me? You have not done anything. Nobody has been saved as a result. It's a scam to come to the house of God. You are not contributing anything. And the next thing you want to take, and, and usually it's God's best we want to take oh come on please are we blessed let me be honest with you church of the Lord Jesus Christ let's return to the place of seeking God sincerely and passionately or coming to the house of God and everybody is checking what did this one this prayer group ah I like these suits that this one is wearing I know father your kingdom come in this territory there is darkness lord we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months that means there is a spirit passing through that territory unhindered and all of a sudden one faithful day that spirit will hear a sound from the earth Shakata kata kata. Lekota kata kata. as it's moving to high dogo someone is taking it from there let me tell you how you drive spirits you make the heavens unconducive don't laugh at what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you how this thing works. Because they will always leave where there is fire and settle down. And wait for a backsliding territory. And then return back. This is how many of those we admire today. That's how they were raised. They were never. A is here asking. Those of you who were there when Koinonia, when he and I started. When you got born again, in two weeks, it will be as if you have spent one year in Christ. Because there was fire everywhere. There still is. 
but because we're a lot more organized now it is very difficult when people got there were people who would get born again filled with the holy spirit from day two they start prophesying and even with the prophesying they are not going anywhere because they are still demons to get out of there as they finish prophesying they go and humble themselves and sit down and learn but now someone gets born again after one month because of the gift of the spirit he prophesies she prophesies the next thing they start speaking to people they speak mistakes into the lives of people because they are seen correctly but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there and before you will now learn and grow you have misled several people gift is not maturity you need to stay with god no matter how you rush you must stay that fire that fire is the maker of men anybody that dodges fire don't trust him don't trust him you must be refined as of gold our desires and appetites must be put genuinely to seek God say amen prayer I'm encouraging you I'm encouraging the church in Zaria I'm encouraging the church everywhere there must be prayer units most ministries do it but many ministries what what they do is not really prayer unit it's just maybe home sales which is wonderful I, I i don't have a problem with it do you know why we not do it as koinonia because you are an extension of the ministry the goal is not joshua selman in every home the goal is the kingdom the power the glory of god your house can become an altar your small area can become an altar two of you three of you can begin to pray it doesn't matter that God started with you. It doesn't need to have a name. The name is prayer. Seven to nine. Five to six in the morning. Nine to ten. Every day or two days in a week or three days in a week. You do this and see what begins to happen. Let me tell you what begins to happen. The moment you pray, there will first be silence. One month, two months, you will start seeing physical agitations. The demons that are resident in men will start reacting something is happening in the realm of the spirit your own loved ones will start fighting you for reasons you cannot explain and say look um you are becoming proud and you say no no sir i'm not because you are becoming proud the moment they say that remember spiritual intelligence you know it's not the individual you you respect the body but go back in the spirit and say satan i'm still there i know it's you jesus looked at peter and said satan get thee behind you and you go and continue and then one day let me tell you how god will announce that he has come to that territory a spectacular move of god will happen one day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of god breaks out in that house breaks out in a house where they hate the holy spirit guess who the first to be filled with the holy ghost will be the father himself and you are wondering my father my father yes your father this controversial person who is so scientific yes sir yes sir he's the one god your prayer the holy spirit has been eyeing him and on that day we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are. It should be a place to come and receive a greater fanning. Can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory? Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, find a space through me lord in prison we represent an extension 
of that altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact, not titles. If you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church, lock it down and go and start praying. Alone, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't invite anybody. Let them come and meet you praying. Shakata, kata, kata. Lekata, kata. And you are praying and God is watching you. My beloved son. No carpet. No canopy. No mic. No suit. No nothing. But a genuine desire to seek him. And God is saying I, I am watching. Listen. All this, all this running around. Am I a prophet or am I an apostle? Is nonsense. It is the place of prayer and work. There is no body that starts ministry and start working with God knowing who he is even if God tells you it will not look like that are you hearing what I'm saying all this I am apostle this just wait and see it will happen you are joking nothing will happen it is in the place of prayer as that fire refines you it starts drawing you to become something and everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet even you you may mistake yourself for an evangelist because the only thing you did was crusade. But then it's eventually, as it's building you, you know that no, this training is not an evangelist training. Ah, why is this unusual? Ah, there are people who think they are called in, they are, some of you here seated, you are born prophets with the office of a prophet, but you have not seen one vision. Because it's not about the vision. Keep praying. Just continue. Just continue. You will argue with anybody and say, no sir, I'm not a prophet. Me, I, I know I'm a pastor because I'm a good teacher. You will find out that teaching is not even part of it. Just keep praying. The refiner's fire comes through that prayer. When your heart is being purged, are we together now? Flesh is being taken away. One day, you will begin to pray and all of a sudden, you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension. Many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me, they are wrong. They don't know. It is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you, you say you are a pastor, who told you? Just because someone prophesied, he saw in part and he said so, he may be right, but he may not be it. No, don't say just because you saw a ring, you saw a hand. You say, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophetess, I'm an apostle. No, sir, don't flatter yourself. Let the place of prayer incubate you. When you come out fully, the name that you are will be shown. Not just by titles, results. Results. Results will show who you are. If you're a prophet, don't tell us. Let the results show it. Show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer. Show us the acumen, the ability to perceive realities. That's what makes a prophet. Show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit. Don't come and talk jargons and waste our time. Show us the performance that comes based on the word of God. Show us the throne in heaven that backs that office. Don't say I'm an apostle. Show us the throne that backs you. Show us the keys of the territory that was given to you. We go around bragging, calling ourselves names, flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves. Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God, to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore 
restore me back the ordinances that help men to walk with God hallelujah praise the Lord I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago when I shook that man as soon as I shook him tears filled my eyes I was almost asking him where did your fire go to what happened to you what made you cold like this who deceived you what did you start listening to where did you go which association did you join restore my fire lift your voice and pray cry it from your spirit restore my fire shakata kata leketo satos kabriata restore my fire restore it oh god the destiny of a territory is at stake the destiny of a territory is at stake this is not the issue of being a man of God this is not the issue of being in ministry preserve us of the ordinances of the spirit Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail. man of God no matter you can be leading a prayer movement 
it's no guarantee that you pray yourself you can pray whenever you are with the people it's no guarantee many prayer many men of god that lead prayer groups i tell you their own prayer lives is dying i tell you this as a man of god because it is hard work for a man of god to be consistent in prayer and be in ministry there are ladies that don't pray don't pray fashion is is eating us up i believe in fashion look good but it's complete nonsense if you don't pray can we pray in the spirit just for one minute just just to allow the holy spirit bring this there are gentlemen that don't pray we are over conscious of ourselves no sir Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. prayer preserve prayer in every territory preserve it in your house preserve it in your life preserve it everywhere don't let it go no matter who laughs at you no matter how western those of you listening from other nations of the world restore prayers back to your homes restore prayer back to your churches whether you are in america whether you are in london it doesn't matter where restore prayer back prayer has equal value everywhere whether you are rich or poor your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life number two how are the ordinances of god advanced and preserved a regular convergence of believers within, within that territory the second way that the ordinances of god are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped empowered there is no territory that can preserve our spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers be it a regular church service be it a midweek service be it different interdenominational programs it doesn't matter there has to be a regular convergence there must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered then they also receive the blueprint of god's current emphasis is one of the highest advantage of coming together when believers come together the whole territory can hear what god is doing now don't assume that because god moved in a particular way yesterday that's what he's still doing today When a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133, a convergence for the purpose of being equipped, it is for this reason that God anointed some. He gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory. So what, what happens here every week is the will of God. A convergence of men and women. Are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd, that there is a joke. Are the people cheers? The more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God, provided 
the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of God the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of five million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation then any other person who is interested no he died for the whole world don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of god and the women of god may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that god is against crowd when you reject it it looks like you are being spiritual but that's been carnal anybody that knows god must love people Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little hit somewhere they said I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too uh, 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 steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings the crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds god brought them don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places god is doing mighty things this place is one of them the bible says and the lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by God to find salvation there must be a regular convergence when Satan wants to frustrate the purposes of God in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank God for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of what God is doing in that ministry to connect and follow. There are all kinds of opportunities for growth. Number three.
how is the kingdom advanced in a territory how are the ordinances of God preserved in a territory ready an open display of real miracles signs and wonders beyond the church walls let me tell you how God is institutionalized in a territory an open display not a private quiet secret doubtful manifestation of his power an open display of real genuine miracles signs wonders that are beyond the church wall out of all the miracles Jesus performed please write it and look up out of all the miracles Jesus performed less than one percent of them was done in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring God glory the glory God receives is in the announcing of what he has done I know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of God our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of God here you must trust God for grace for instant performance of the world instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching God in action you saw it before during and after when Jesus finished declaring his his um, call in Luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for starters to prove to you the hand of God is upon me Mr. Man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you'll be criticized and hated but I assure you God will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in God because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day God anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say God revealed to me that in in five months they are going to tar this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months you don't need to tell them God has done it the next time they see you that convicting power the day you now speak and say I saw death in this community they will not laugh at you again they do not take our words serious do you know why bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God something that defies principalities and signs and wonders most of this open display is largely done in the south that's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there the, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings the miracles that happen you will see people sitting on the street selling akara selling pap and watching people rise up from wheelchairs now let me tell you it does not matter how hardened you are if you see a real miracle you must go back and think about it you can choose to argue but the truth still remains the truth what has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting those who have laughed at you and said koinonia every time you must trust god for an open display everybody say an open display that one day you step into the parlor and all of a sudden someone that is to go for surgery maybe your loved ones just because you stepped in there while they are busy criticizing a man of God on TV 
you look and say daddy the lord just said i should tell you that this cancer is gone and he loves their young boys i was with you i was i remember serving god in boys brigade when i was growing up while they are talking all that drama there is instant miracle and he touches his stomach he will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say no no what is happening and within a short time the lord is glorified let me tell you what they will start calling you uh, where is prophetess pastor evangelist we're about to pray is God saying anything? That's a sign that God is working. God is working something powerful in this time. Oh, God is raising mighty men in our days. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till his church looks like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop. Till my life. chapter 19 please quickly Acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of Christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship the anointing is a silencer of doubters Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is what a thousand words our noise is too much we need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve god acts chapter 19 verse 11 11 and god wrought what kind of miracles there are ordinary miracles they are supernatural in themselves but they are special miracles by the hands of Joshua Selman, verse 12. So that from his body, this is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. Today, we just use it out of showmanship. A man of God just says, hey, What did you say is wrong with you, sir? Darkness is all over our house. Say, so Bring his handkerchief. I hold it. We spit on it. We rub it on our face. People carry it back home like a charm. One year after that handkerchief arrived home, nothing happened. It's a sign that there's no power, period. Obed-Edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time. But something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered and after two weeks you come back one month, nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you, with me. I should go back for a retreat and say, Lord, these hands. Otherwise, a day will come the hands will just look like tissue paper. As it's coming on your head, you believe that nothing is happening. Keep these hands anointed, oh God. Keep these hands anointed. Keep these hands anointed. That's a good prayer to pray for yourself. Keep these hands anointed. May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change. This is not about showmanship. When your hands are empty, you are not in ministry. Let me tell you, you are just, you are just a, no. Abba. Believe what I'm saying. Keep these hands. Preserve it. Preserve your grace. Preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon his hand. He said, God brought mighty miracles. Give it to us again, please. By the hands of Paul. What is happening through your hands? Nothing. 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 You don't have to be in church. What is happening through your hands? What happens to my destiny if I shake you? You claim that God lives in you. Brothers and sisters, what has happened to your hands? Nothing. Oh, let me agree with you. And we hold people. While we are praying, their eyes are opening. We are the only ones who close our eyes. Because they don't believe in us. They know that that prayer is just nonsense. In Jesus' name, amen. They say, thank you, sir. And they go back and say, sorry, can I see this man of God? Because that's the real person they know who solved their problems. I want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute. 
and say, Lord, put something upon this hand. Put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes. It's not a carnal prayer. I want you to sincerely pray. Shake it like a so Put an anointing upon my hand, so God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone. And with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves. Upon them which had an evil spirit. You know the name of the Lord saying, we adjure you. They thought it's just by, by big manism or wearing nice clothes. And one day, they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits. Are we together now? We are reading to verse 20. And then 14 says, And there were seven sons of one skiva, a Jew and a chief of the priest, which did so. 15. And the evil spirit answered them. That's the side effect of lack of true power. It's not that the devil is trying to confess. This is not confession. This is a question. You, are, you, are, you, you stupid man of God. You think everybody is faking it. He called those who are real. Known by the realm of the spirit. Not by members. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hi. Who are you? When a demon spirit asks you who are you. Is that a nice thing? From the realm of the spirit. They are watching you every day. You have one suit. You went for a program. They kept water in front of your table. They did a, a good publicity. And they said, now it's time for the man of God, a man of strange anointing. And you hold the mic. And you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you. And all of a sudden, the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry i don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army progress verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Let me give you a very true secret. The power of God is unlimited. But its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors. Which includes their level of spiritual growth. You must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually. There are many arrogant people. They will do anything. You are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed, but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free. You just get up by yourself, carry a bottle of oil, and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft. I'm, I'm, I'm in Christ. And you go there. As soon as you get there, you start pouring oil around the compound. Nobody talks to you. You just find out that that night as you are sleeping the next day you get up and find yourself in the hospital what happens 
They said, that's how the spirits work. They don't talk to people. The next thing you just, whatever happens to you is their answer. Listen, it's not everything you see that is, that is all that there is. When you see a man of God moving in the anointing, it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening. But there are interplay of spiritual laws. A man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder. And you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere. When that man, if he's spiritual, if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done. Are we together? It's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever. No. That's why we must grow. But as we grow, we must trust God to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight. There are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed, one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough. It will take the corporate body to bring it. We do not know. And one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him. So we must have that. That's just a lesson for us to learn. Let's read down, please, quickly. Media, don't take it away. Just leave it there so that we we'll hurry up, please. Help us. And this was known to all the community. Are you seeing now? Something unpleasant now is known to all the community. Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear came upon them. And the name of the Lord was magnified. They saw the apostles healing the sick. And I'm sure that they said, what is there? What is there? Miracles. Anybody can heal. The sons of Sceva went to try it. When the demons beat them, it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere. And the Bible says that the people glorified God. And then verse 18 says, and many that believed did what as a result? They came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19, we are reading to 20. Many of them which also use curious acts. That means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it, it was working small by small. But when certain men came into that city, they got everyone packing out, including magicians. Do you think if that book did not do something for them, wouldn't they have thrown it since? They saw something superior and powerful. And the Bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who? A community. Imagine a popular herbalist in Bromo or somewhere, maybe Zaria City, bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and saying, I was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady. And just because I saw her cat walking, I thought it was all about the reform. When I touched fire, I got a reply and a response that I have never seen for 30 years of herbal practice. This is what happened there. And they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver. 20 popular scripture. So mightily grew the word of God. Why? Because of a public display of miracles, signs and wonders. We need the supernatural. We need to cry for the anointing. We need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives. Man of God, don't preach without power. It's not about saying, there's somebody here, the power of God will throw you. That's not what we are talking about. That, that's not power. We are talking of results. Results. Undeniable results. Like some of you are seated here now, you are coming for the first time. You will not need to tell people you came for Koinonia. You will just go back and all of a sudden you find out that something has shifted. You open your Bible. A true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter. It's until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely. Let me give us one more. There are six but I'll just stop at number four so that we pray. Number one is prayer. Number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory. Number three, an open display of miracle signs and wonders beyond the church walls. Number four, intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. 
the fourth way the ordinances of God are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers this is a serious one let me tell you this failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget God not just forget his ordinances but forget God I'm watching that and I'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of Christ and even the church in Zaria who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now everybody has left them and we're focusing on ministry who are the people mentoring those in secondary school thank God for FCS thank God for um, um, CEM thank God for all of these people but there are some of you here you need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like Shade's child here that by the time they are growing they are not only receiving education alone there must be an intentional mentorship of younger people most people is the mistake of the American church they left their children so you will see a mother who was an old Baptist woman serve God all her life but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love God we must concentrate right now most people from the ages of 17 downwards all they are obsessed about is phones Android devices PS4 I don't have a problem with it but their entire obsession oh what OS are you using you hear that that's all they think about oh I'm using this PS4 there's this they need fire oh they need they are not too young they need serious fire i'm not against that it's the reality that comes with that age range but we must be able to guide people that's why i love it when you see our children come here for koinonia i know that many of you say are they too young to understand ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand you see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down that's the child of a herbalist and they tell you ah that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe that's what boy you are saying that is my son is your son in the physical in the realm of the spirit is something else an ancient spirit is seated on that small child there is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things they may be too small to articulate it but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Second Timothy. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. He said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too. A superstar lifestyle is not God's plan. God's plan is not superstar Apostle Joshua Selman. God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace, certain precepts. And your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so. May God forbid that the day will come in Zaria when the average young man does not know God. Say amen. May God forbid that in Zaria during a church service, who have young people hanging around sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the God who can change any man's destiny may God forbid that is not your child that will refuse to know God listen 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 our children must love God and they must love God genuinely somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate God I want you to be aware there is a secret indoctrination of a generation ages 5 to 15 must be preserved those of you here that God is calling you into children ministry receive an anointing for it it's not all about giving children biscuits and sweets let them cram the memory verses that's how we started children now don't know any memory verse again you ask them john 3 16 they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense teach them don't say it's not useful let them know 
when we were being raised they taught godly songs now in most schools children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents a little child is singing a song that even as an adult you look at him and say no this should not be there must be restoration of godliness cm may god anoint you more and revive you more please fcs may god anoint you and revive you more individual children ministry groups may god anoint you and revive you more because if you yourself are not revived what will you teach the children bad things bad things that's what our children learn now things that are more than their age and we say it does not matter it matters you have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things don't let them watch it don't let them watch it there are times you need to regulate i'm not i'm not trying to be harsh but there are times you need to regulate all this this a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen You don't like what I'm saying. I don't plan to stop at all. We must say it again and again. Some of you, God gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools, not with the name of any ministry and bless them. But now that you have become Apostle Joshua Selman, you have become Madam, Madam, whatever, businesswoman or whatever, you have stopped. Go back, repent and go back. We have this mentality that when we are ministering to children, it's a sign that we ourselves are children. It's the society that makes it. So in a bit to show that we are matured, we leave the children and say, look, let's start talking to married men. Jesus said, let the little children come to who? Come to me. He says, and do not forbid them, for for such is the kingdom of heaven. Please return back to children ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. When a child looks at you and does like this to you, don't smile at the child and rub the head. Carry the hand and spank it and say, no, you don't do like this. You greet people. Are we together? Most of us watch children do all kinds of things. A visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching. Is that good? Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but a rod of correction, not discussion. You don't have to be hostile on children. A little spank with two fingers, one, two, and then tell them what they did that was wrong. Don't just leave them cry. This is what you did. Mommy does not like it. Daddy does not like it. For that reason, one, two, Jesus too does not like it. In include Jesus. Let them learn. And know that it's not just you alone. preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom there's this song that says our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your made a vow that for as long as I'm alive my generation must know God it's a covenant I've entered with myself there's no going back there's no discussion there's no hope of going back to go back is to die in life and in death it's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life it is to serve him forever and to introduce him to a generation God is waking us up. Stop playing games. Don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people. You can start now. Some of you, you are the firstborn. You are the only one who knows God in your house. 
your your fourth born can look at you and say stupid girl that's a joke you need to cast out that demon out of their head and organize a standard bible study using a koinonia message and tell them sit down you are 10 years older than him is insulting you you beat that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined the day i give birth to a child who insults me that that day I'm not going to concentrate on the child. The spirit that could enter my roof through that child. A child of, maybe it's a child of two, three years, nine, ten years. No. See, am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though are about to marry. Never over pamper children let them know discipline is part of love because most of our children will be born in millionaire families you must discipline them Don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society pray they say no I, the church is hot please daddy can you give me the car to the jeep no son you are sitting down here if me your father the owner of the jeep the jeep is sitting down you must sit down and pray Let's go back to our primary schools. I'm serious. I'm rounding up. Let's go back to our secondary schools. Gone are the days when teachers, including Christian schools, I don't know what is Christian about the school if they don't pray. You have a Christian school and you openly said it's a Christian school and at the beginning of the class, they don't pray. What, what, is, what is the Christian about it? The teacher himself cannot pray. You never see a fasting program organized in the school. Nobody cares. While they are praying, the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again. Wait and let Koinonia start her schools. Oh yes. Oh yes. Let Koinonia start her schools. And you will see. There's nothing like I'm busy who will supervise it. It's a mandate. Don't do that and busy man of God and allow the devil to kill your ministry. Sit down, open your eyes and see what is happening. This teacher's life is questionable. He's destroying the life of the student. Call him to the office. Sir, we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you, but we notice that um, it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children. Could there be a problem? Would you need some counsel? Nobody should talk to me. I'm doing all that nonsense. I tell him, as you finish this rubbish, collect your last salary with the cashier, go out of this place and never return. Any good PTA, they should clap for you as the director of that school and say you are preserving standards. They laughed at Covenant University, laughed at Landmark University, laughed at Mountaintop University, but these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to Cambridge and Harvard because they kept God. Don't throw God and think it will go well with you. We'll continue next week. Six precepts to keep and preserve God in a territory. Which one have you missed? Would it be prayer, warfare, and intercession? Could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers? You come to the house of God today, you come after one month, or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your arrears are paid only to come and testify have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere what is it still doing there when you come from that family apostle can you come and visit us try first Try first. Don't get used to all this. I, I love I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. I carried that understanding back home. And I said, Daddy, I know that for 35 years, no door has opened in this family. But I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing. I'm using the opportunity of this strike. 
can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does and in two days something that did not happen in 30 years happens you have revealed Christ to that environment and finally we must mentor the younger believers but the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored because there are many proud proud people proud people you touch somebody he just falls down and you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around colleague mentality some of you are in secondary school or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school thank God for what God is doing with them and all of a sudden this pompous arrogant attitude you see everybody and what is there you see vision I see vision you pray for the sick I pray for the sick it's why we never receive we keep making mistakes that are avoidable mistakes now let me tell you mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored but they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing and they taught them rubbish they taught them pride they taught them a pompous life they taught them a theology of imbalance it matters who you listen to it matters who you open up your spirit to but that spirit must be open brothers and sisters our generation is at stake in the next 10 or 20 years many of the people we look at today will be gone is, is the truth do you believe that many of our fathers they are already wrapping up we insulted them we said ah they came and they taught people cover your head don't cover your head we insulted them they taught people die 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 we insulted them now the button is being passed to us let's hear what our children will say about us we insulted them we refused to see what God was doing through them and as young as we are we kept running our mouth insulting them they preserved the button some of them today look at great men like Papa people like Billy Graham still alive these men serve God to the end let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency that's the song my very powerful song that's the last song we'll sing this night when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i live my life i can't remember it again. did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done listen all my treasures will be nothing the jeep and the duplex only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time am i against prosperity no but if that's all you can give a generation if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree you have failed lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in merry clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've told me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone listen we're not going to be here forever no matter how you don't want to believe me nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old 200 years ago none of us on earth today was on earth live your life foolishly we owe our generation and our children a debt
I will never except God takes my life but it will not be when I'm alive that I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth if it means my life going for it let it go but the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation this is ministry if you are not ready for this don't jump around and talk nonsense a lady sent me a text today passionately she may be following listening and she said apostle she's from my village she said apostle come to my village why have you not come i said don't worry you think i won't come there i'm coming god is counting on you listen carefully i'm rounding up god is counting on you i'm not a man of god it doesn't matter there are souls if god planned that in pastor alpha's lifetime you are supposed to save 100 million people do you know if you save 20 million people the world will clap for you but it's when you get to heaven god will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest if god has anointed you to heal 1 million people and you documented 100,000 testimonies they will register you in the christian hall of fame but when you get to heaven you hear nonsense our works will be tried by fire let's make business with god this wastage of time let us start with our jerusalem zaria let us start with nigeria you see what is happening in nigeria you know what most of us are doing what is happening in this nation those who are for a those who are for b but the preservers of the ordinances of god know that there are spirits they can read the writings on the wall that this is not an issue of north south east or west this is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love god and the preservers of the truth say it doesn't matter where i come from lord it is your kingdom that must be established can we take a few minutes to pray tonight rise up on your feet There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus. And let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Great revival. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shakata Bakoto Sote. Lord, we pray the glory of God across Zaria City, across Savo. Across prison, across Shika, in the name of Jesus, your ordinances in this land is preserved, preserved in our campuses, preserved in every church, preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord. We decree it and we declare it. Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray Who stand on the gap on behalf of our land Who stand in the gap on behalf of our land Down on our knees We'll take us 
Over Zaria, we curse you. Lift your voice and pray. We curse you from region to region. Shakatos Kaparia Kadas Kalepai. Embre Ketos Segeta. The powers that keep men poor. The powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land. The powers that stop development. The powers that stop advancement. The powers that destroy men of God. The powers that destroy churches. The powers that destroy families. We come against you by the blood. We come against you by the blood. As the church of the Lord Jesus, we come against you. We come against you. Controlling powers over territories. Spirits of violence, spirits of wickedness, yokes, burdens, spells, enchantments, divination, manipulations of the heavenly bodies. We come against you in the name of Jesus. The body of Christ grows. Zaria grows. Whether Christians, whether Muslims, we advance in this city. We are the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church. Hallelujah. I know our time is gone, but can we pray for Nigeria? We listen as God looks at the map, He's looking for incense. He has found it in other locations. Zaria must represent itself in the realm of the spirit. Let God not see different localities, some villagers, and God will see an uneducated woman intercessor and check Zaria and say, Zaria, where is your incense? I like us to pray and say, Nigeria is my business. Nigeria is God's business. Peace to the walls. Peace to the borders. Peace in the east. Peace in the north. Peace everywhere. We fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus we decree and declare we manifest our priesthood we are lampstands we are lampstands priests unto God we raise an incense of intercession over this nation Nigeria is God's own nation Nigeria amalgamated by the hand of God himself we command from border to border the spirits of bloodshed we curse you we curse you we curse you hallelujah listen 
listen let's pray against the spirit of sentiment are we together whether christian whether muslim the truth is that we must live alone and we must live together are we together whether whether Ibo, whether yoruba whether south south whether northern the truth of the matter is that there's nothing we can do about ourselves we were brought by god let's cause the spirit of darkness Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated Hallelujah, say hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, glory to the
let me do the singing. I'm going to sing this song once. I want those who are under the anointing while I sing. This instruction God is giving me. This same song. You guys have done your good music. Let me prophesy now with it. You'll be surprised to see what will happen in here, outside, as I'm singing this song. If that anointing finds you as you come out here, begin to rejoice. Because it is strange breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Shabalakato Sabadasiata. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. 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 No power can stand it. Glory to the Father. The forces must let you go. Hey, hallelujah. There's authority in the song that I'm singing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to my Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. They are leaving you now. They are leaving you now. I'm speaking by the Spirit. They are leaving you now. There are chains over you, leaving now. There are chains leaving you now. I'm ministering by the Spirit. There are chains are leaving you now. Even the lawful captives. Kabarakatos. Chains. I'm seeing chains breaking from the hands of men. Chains. Be broken. The worship team already prepared our hearts. I command the chains to be broken. By the authority of this kingdom. Be broken. Shabarakatos. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. I'm commanding chains to break. Bring them out. The anointing of the Spirit is breaking chains over flow one, two, three online. Chains. Chains of captivity. All kinds of bondages. Every force of darkness. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. Release their destinies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory 
to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Now listen, God is giving me an instruction. Hold on. If there is any power associated with your family, you will know now by the fire that falls on you. This is what the Lord is telling me. I'm about to pray that if there is anything that is demonic, responsible for the challenge of your family, get ready now because I see a wind of fire moving from this place right there, outside. I declare it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the fire of the Spirit visit men and women and families now. Hold on. Listen, I'm still praying. Listen to me. The Bible says that Paul was at a place, it was cold in the night, and they put wood together. When they said the, a viper was there, but it could not be seen. But when they set fire on the wood, the fire exposed the viper. I declare Shabbatos Katadia by the fire of the Spirit, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, every viper hiding in any family, hiding in any destiny, be exposed now. Be exposed now. Be exposed now, Shantakatosh. Be exposed now. Every viper, every snake, scorpion. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Where are the forces fighting your advancement? Forces fighting men's advancement. The Lord is judging them now. Judging them now. Judging them now. It's time for you to move forward. I command judgment. On the forces fighting your advancement, I command judgment. On the forces fighting your advancement, over overflow one, lift your hands, please. Everyone in overflow one, lift your hands. The Lord is ministering to me. Overflow one, lift your hands. There is a mighty deliverance that is coming there. At the count of three overflow one i want you to shout jesus as you shout jesus i'm seeing gates with chains breaking are you ready now one two three bring that lady that lady going back I'm looking at a lady but in the spirit I'm watching I'm not saying you're a bad girl my dear all I'm seeing is a serpent I'm not seeing a human being in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I expose that serpent now glory to the father you are seated on the throne hallelujah Hallelujah. 
I want to pray a very interesting prayer. Don't mind me. Just allow me. I'm ministering under the anointing. I'm going to say exactly what I'm hearing in the spirit. And if it doesn't sound logical, don't worry. Just let me do the prayer. Snakes be judged. Snakes be judged. Snakes be judged. Snakes. Serpents of the night be judged. Serpents of the night be judged. Serpents of the night be judged. God is against you. Ebenezer, the helper of man, is against you. Snakes, I say it again. Be judged, be judged. No rest, no peace. Be judged. Snakes. Be George. Hail a masena na madara na madara. Shana na na na. Shana na na na. I'm seeing a lady vomiting something. That's what I'm seeing in a vision right now. I don't know what it is I'm seeing, but in the name of Jesus Christ, God is releasing people. There is victory. God is helping people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire, not impartation, fire consuming people's head. And God is saying his restoration of lost glory. That's what I'm seeing. Restoration. Something that used to be in your life and all of a sudden faded away I'm seeing fire coming on people's heads where are they oh God I stretch my hands now let the fire bring restoration 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 help them please restoration 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 I command restoration of every lost glory even the lawful captive shall be delivered all those who are out in front under the anointing here I declare every legal grounds upon which any spirit is operating in your life at the count of three by the mystery of the blood it leaves you now one Two, three, go, 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 go out of their lives in the name of Jesus. Out of their lives when the blood speaks, nothing else speaks again. Victory by the blood of the eternal covenant. Victory by the blood of the eternal covenant. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family here and I'm seeing that the father in that family I don't know if he's out of pressure but went to a herbalist and they gave him something to go and bury in the house you may not even know it this is something that happened a while ago and whatever it is seemed to backfire when it came to money issues he didn't go and pay like give the herbalist whatever it is that's what God is showing me now and I'm seeing that because of that every door in that family everything just closed I'm going to pray Lord wherever whoever represents that family here whether inside or outside or online I'm praying right now by the mercy of the God of heaven whatever enchantment and activities of darkness invoked by those herbalists I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus 
Who is Rebecca? Rebecca. Rebecca, like Becky. Rebecca. Rebecca. I'm hearing a name, Rebecca. Rebecca. You are seated on the throne. Stand up. You are Rebecca. That's the person I'm talking about. Come. Stand up. You are seated on the throne. Madam, where are you coming from? You came from Abuja. Yes, I'm seeing you in a vehicle from Abuja yes, coming. You came alone? I came with my niece. And my younger brother, my cousins, they live in Zaria. You, One came from Kano. My, you, but you came from Abuja. Yes, I came from What's Abuja. What's your name? Asmao Rebecca. 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 Asmao. Come. It's time for your victory. Lift your hands. There is. Let her go now. I command the spirit oppressing you. You have come to Koinonia, the place where God dwells. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power that fights you. In the name of Jesus Christ. This woman is going to return with very strange testimonies. Mama, you are Rebecca. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you. The Lord has located you and end comes to your captivity. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Samnaka. Please help this woman. Are they, are they, this mama, are they Rebecca? Mama, are you Rebecca? Rebecca. Huh? Rebecca. You are Rebecca, mama? Okay. This one, too, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Sometimes God gives a word and then I'm, I'm talking to you now, my dear. Where are you from? Samnaka. State of origin. Region. Kaduna. You are from Kaduna State. Yes, Come, sir. I want to pray for you. There's trouble in your family. You are in need of the power of God desperately. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end this captivity. The lady that is going back, tap her, just tell her to look at me. Just look at me. It's over now, in Jesus' name. All of you are Rebecca. My dear, salvation is coming and anointing is leaving me to you and it's for your family from next month you will start hearing strange testimonies open doors mama you are rebecca who else is rebecca all of you are rebecca i'm going to pray for you Kai, ma i have to pray for you yes ma the spirit of death is following your family I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you father in the name of jesus christ I lay my hands over our mommy. Help her, please. I command the spirit of death. One of you here, I'm, I don't know which of you, but I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you in front here. There's one of you, an anointing is coming on you. Um, the Lord is bringing deliverance. Right now, you can't stand it. It's, it's the power of God. One of you, an anointing is coming on you for strange deliverance. Mama, be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Hi. There's, there's serious witchcraft. Excuse me, just a minute. I command that spirit to leave this lady now. You must go. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. He, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ um, this, this mama doesn't speak English I think she speaks Yoruba she, she speaks Yoruba who is Ejimi, can you come or someone just tell her the Lord is bringing breakthrough you can whisper it now here it doesn't have to be it's your mother come the Lord is breaking the Lord is breaking a yoke, the yoke of delay. Ah, as I just mentioned delay, I just saw fire, just left me. As I just mentioned that word delay, I'm about to pray on it. But since, since I just saw the fire, let me just do what I saw in the spirit. 
the spirit of delay be judged now the spirit of delay i say it again be judged now the spirit of delay the spirit of delay be judged now the spirit of delay open your heart open your heart and pray the spirit of delay be judged now any kind of delay the spirit of delay be judged now the spirit of delay be judged now be judged now be judged now breakthrough for your family God is bringing breakthrough mama God is bringing breakthrough your son will tell you in Yoruba in the name of Jesus Christ there's something on you that makes wrong people come to you I have to pray for you I just, I'm looking at you very bad people come to you for bad reasons no serious person you know what I'm saying I don't want to start bringing long it's not there is something there's a spirit in you that attracts those kind of people they will never pass you and go free they must turn back and this thing is destroying your life hold my hands shout Jesus look at this so you just think it's just love you are in love with a beautiful girl it's not just love out now go in the name of Jesus hallelujah glory to the Lamb glory to the Father you are seated on the throne hallelujah Glory to the Lamb. I've not seen this in a long time. The Lord is showing me a map again. And this map is going to Kogi State. I'm laying my hands now. Kogi State. Let that anointing begin to find people within that region. Now I'm praying. You come within that region. Let the anointing find you. Deliverance for that region now. Shatakoto Seketea. Kogi State. Deliverance now. From any strange power. Any force of darkness. If you don't know your state of origin and you are from there, you can know it now by the anointing. In the name of Jesus. Anyone from that region. That's the reason the anointing of the Spirit is focusing on now. I command deliverance now. Shabatakato seketeba. Shabrakato skata. The strong men within those regions. Let God's people go now. Release them right now. The spirits of the grave. The spirits of ancestry. I curse you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Father. Please lift your hands. We'll pray for the sick shortly but there are people here why god brought you tonight is to receive the healing anointing i just saw it i don't know where they are they're in almost every overflow there are representations lord jesus anyone who you brought here to receive the anointing for healing let that anointing come this is your moment now receive it now ordained by god to receive this anointing today ordained by God to receive the grace for healing I'm seeing that anointing coming on two people in worship team two people worship team that anointing that grace hallelujah glory to the Lamb the anointing to heal the sick you don't just pray for the sick. There is an anointing. 
I say it again, the anointing to bring healing, to transport the power of God from the throne to their lives. Receive that anointing right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama, come please. Please help her. She's not running by herself. It's under the anointing. Mama, I see a new dimension of healing coming on you. A new dimension. Just hold her. A new dimension of healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah! This mama is going to pray for the sick and you'll be surprised. There is an unusual anointing upon you for barrenness. For barrenness. I'm praying. Help that lady, please. In the name of Jesus. Receive that anointing, Mama. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace. The grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Alabashi katusi adabakuriata. Jada soto si katusi alakahambarisa. The Lord is asking me to stand in front of you. Just to stand in front of you. That's the instruction I'm getting. The light shines out of darkness. God is removing something from your chest. I'm seeing something leaving you. I don't know what this is, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I stand in front of you. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. All of you who are standing here in the name of Jesus, I agree with you. And I declare, come let me touch your child. I'm going to pray for favor. When you hear me say favor, lift your hands and receive. You need it in your life. Too many people have taken advantage of you. Even as... I'm seeing people laughing. That's, that's why I just stopped. This is very strange. A strange anointing is a sign of victory in the spirit. That's what the Lord is showing me. Strange. It's an anointing. Very strange anointing. You see, if you are not spiritual and you don't understand why God does these things, it's not showmanship. The Bible says he filled their mouth with laughter. I read it for you. You can't stand it. It's something that laughter you see is warfare. It's not just laughing hysterically. I release it. The families that is for, the individuals that is for, laughter is a weapon in the spirit. It disarms the enemy. So my dear, when I'm praying for favor, please you stand to receive it, eh? But I bless your child. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There's someone, your family member has been missing. This is more than one year. Who is that person? Because the person who is missing is still alive. Let, if she's the one, who is missing? Don't come and tell lies here. Are you sure? My father, I your talked father, to you about it before. You told me about yes, it. Yes, and you remember. prayed where what happened when last did you see him 2016 august saturday he told me he was coming and that was the end from where from edo state benin and you've not seen him we've not seen him since date we are still in search of him how about you my cousin sister your cousin sister is missing yes all these people they are Shaka, leave them Shaka, Shaka. their loved ones are Shaka. just find out once they are don't please if, if you are not related to the people don't please don't come here we're going to pray generally if you, if you do it like that, there will be chaos. How about you? Yes, sir, my in-law. Your in-law? Yes, sir. What do you mean your in-law? From the United States. Okay. All of you, your loved ones are missing? Your loved one is missing. Who is that? Your younger brother? Yes, sir. Missing? Since when? 2014. 2014? They've not seen him. Yes, sir. You see how Satan works? How can somebody leave home? 
for you to sympathize with people put them in your shoes imagine that your child left home and said mommy i'm coming and never comes back i'm prophesying to you three years your child went and said mommy i'm coming until today come mama give her the mic hold on mama your, ch your child is alive this boy you see are they twins or is it the same person this one this is the only one what but happened to him he left school i put him in apu he refused poly he refused he's busy taking drugs going about lying to people that his parents are dead all over times they call me in the police station or your state but that court that is arrested i don't know how they set him free at times you see our honestly let me speak towards young people it's, it's okay mama it's your only son, only son. One, one, okay, one. that's all yes you, that's how you know it's a spirit because the devil sat down and saw that these boys will bring joy to the mother and then the devil decided to it, will the lady not marry and go huh he's very intelligent in school he was in the he left the school Wait, wait. What's his name? Awal is his name. Awal. Awal. Yes. Hi. We are going to pray. Like a month ago, from what God is showing me, this boy had problem with police. They were smoking. In the they were yes, smoking he, Igbo. Is, Police came and packed drugs. them with his friends. Drugs. This is what, Mama, let me talk to you now. I'm the one talking to you. I know. You see, when you see me pray about this, this drug, this thing, that drug is a spirit. It's more than with due respect to doctors and this thing. It's not just because of the physical thing it gives. I'm telling you, that thing is a spirit. If you have a child or you know someone that takes that thing, counseling is not the way out there is a real spirit that must be casted out are we together some of you here right now seated in this program you love god but that what what they, they call it codeine again uh, mama 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 don't worry it's it's, it's it's okay it's okay because you see the way these boys are desperate for this money they will coin every kind of story and beg you and lie you give them 100 naira you give. once you give them enough to take this thing they will disappear and go and rubbish it let me tell you there is none of those boys that is bad in himself there is none of those girls that are bad in themselves is the influence of spirits nobody will be killing himself and eating death like that every day mama you have come for miracle service god will do something about your situation who is this my brother my mom younger brother your for mom's over, younger brother yes for missing. over 10 years we have not seen him 10 years yes, you've sir. not seen him oh pray how about you sir my elder you're brother. the pastor that came from worry yeah, okay. from delta state from delta state okay. uh, my elder brother was missing about 20 years ago we really forget forgot about him in ghana he was in ghana and he's, and he's yes, missing yes okay let me pray with you it's an instruction because some of the situations now they are even very difficult situations I, I don't know in myself whether some of them are alive or they've gone to be with the Lord or whatever but my job is to pray because God has instructed me to pray mama please stop crying you came here with faith in your heart let me tell you you must eat the fruit of your labor and I'm saying this I'm using this mother as a point of contact not just to every mother here but to all our mothers the force that wants them to labor and die in pain go to their graves in pain we challenge that force now in the name of Jesus Christ it's an error to sow and someone reap in the name of Jesus every true mother that has labored to sow may they reap in the name of Jesus Christ Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying. Everyone here whose loved one is missing, 
and alive and walking in the earth here i connect them back now in the name of jesus i'm praying for you i connect them back now in the name of jesus jesus called lazarus and when he called lazarus he came out i call them by their various names in the spirit for as long as they are alive and walking on this earth i put a desire in them to reconnect to their families those who have been jailed because you see some of these people let's be very fair some of them they they smuggle their way out of the country they go to libya they go to all of these places some of them go to do prostitution unfortunately some of them go because they want to make money someone tells them come travel and all of that so some of them they may even be in cells in some of these places you may never know but regardless of the case for as long as they are on earth we cry for mercy in the name of jesus christ may they be reconnected back to you in jesus name god bless you please go back to your seat rejoicing Go back to your seat rejoicing. Go back to your seat rejoicing. I hope someone is holding that person shouting me. My friend, come. You are doing your ushering work, but I will pray for you before you go back. Eh? Look at me. I'm looking at you. The Lord is telling me to tell you August 7th is a month that breakthrough will begin in a very strange way for you. Hold my hands. August 7th, don't forget, write it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this gentleman. You have revealed to me August 7th. I prophesy to him in the name of Jesus Christ. May God change your life within that time. May God change your life within that time. May God change your life within that time. I'm seeing a ring, a ring in the spirit. I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. I'm seeing a ring. Ordinary, when you see a ring, you would think maybe God is saying he's bringing marriage. Maybe marriage to families. But this one, God is delivering people from spirit entities with all kinds of fraternities over their lives. Right now, I stretch my hands. That's why it's important to let the Holy Ghost interpret things. I know that many of you may not believe what I'm praying, but you just allow me to pray. Every spirit entity covenanting to you as a husband or as a wife, I set fire on this ring I see in the spirit. Be free from them now. Ladies, be free now. I command those spirit entities to release you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the gentleman, I command freedom for you now from any entity laying claims over you. You go to bed and they come to you in the night. They try to molest you. They try to sleep with you. They can use faces of people you know or you don't know or animals anyone under the sound of my voice who any stranger comes to him in the night while you sleep fire is coming on you now fire is coming on you now fire is coming on you now Fire is coming on you now. Fire is coming on you now. I command that they let you go now. For some of us, when good things are about to happen, just when you are about to get it, you go in the night and someone comes to sleep with you in that dream. As soon as you wake up from that experience, no matter what it is, it's gone. Whether it is favor, whether it is breakthrough, Fire is still speaking. I'm praying. At the count of three. Oh God, you who is a mighty deliverer. I pray that your anointing will search for these ones. And bring them deliverance now. One, two, three. Let there be deliverance for you now. 
deliverance for you now from any spirit entity laying claims on your destiny hallelujah thank you Jesus this lady with lime yes you come no look at me look at me I'm talking that one with you yes come where are you coming from? Benway. Benway State. Look at me. Look at this. Are you seeing? She just stood there. And while I was looking, I just saw a spirit to her look at me and turn the face. Now, it's very funny how these things work. See, one of the prayers you must pray in your life is for the grace of open eyes. If your eyes are closed in this life, and all that is open is your brain you will be in trouble open eyes is not something just for prophets it's one of the true riches of the kingdom you must cry that God will open your eyes not to see nonsense around to see something that is destiny molding now look at this girl how will I stand and see someone there and call her out imagine that this lady went back like this to her she will now say oh God so this is how you didn't locate me sensitivity discernment is a priceless spiritual gift sensitivity it comes by praying in the Holy Ghost it comes by praying in the Holy Ghost not wishing praying in the Holy Ghost you activate your organs you have to pray for a long time in the spirit for your spirit to be heightened to be able to perceive spiritual things otherwise you will get into all kinds of error wrong perception that you have started seeing things does not mean they are clear you must continue in the place of prayer until it becomes accurate i just showed you the thing of ring now some of you may see that ring now and then tell somebody it's, it's not marriage as it were you see it was something else but it's a ring this lady has bad luck in her life very bad luck. I have to pray for you. She just came quietly standing. This I would have shared the grace. And the dear lady will go back. And then it will look as if God is not in the place. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing you cough. I'm seeing her cough. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. That she's beginning to cough. I don't know why what is having to do with coughing. But in the name of Jesus Christ, Shatos Kalabarianda Shibrasia, Kolas Kabata Shidatusia, Katos Kabarandushki Anakaladia, Karus Kadi Prehaski Yabari. Let everything that speaks against you leave now. This lady swallowed something in the dream. Someone came to her, gave her something and she swallowed in the dream. If you ever say you like this girl, everything in your life goes down immediately. I'm not saying she's a bad girl. Please don't get me wrong. I'm teaching her something here. She's not a bad girl, but this is the operation in her life. There are people, do you know why we minister to people like that? This is what sometimes prophets see. That if they don't get discernment, they go around saying, someone now may not see this correctly and say this girl is a witch. He's not exactly wrong in terms of saying that there is war associated with her life. You can come now and hold her hands as a businessman. In two months of relationship, everything goes down. And she knows she loves God. But if you are not discerning, you will now call the poor girl a witch. And everybody will start running away from her. She's not a witch. There is just a challenge. And then if you also say she's alright like that. And somebody marries her. That guy's life will be torn into pieces. This is the testimony of so many families. It's an uncomfortable truth. But it's true. Human beings carry spirits. They carry presence. 
Father, liberty for her. The devil is already ah. Someone in overflow one and overflow three is being delivered from fibroid. 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 I just saw a hand reaching into someone's like someone's stomach to bring out something. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of fibroid, we pray for the sick shortly. We'll be very fast at it. Fibroid is gone now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone. Can we pray for the sick very quickly? Now listen, I want you, if you are coming here to be prayed for, come full of faith. You don't have to say what is wrong with you. If you are not asked, don't worry. And all of us who are going to pray for the sick, we are going to make this very fast. Are we together? Now, um, as always, overflow one and part of overflow two. Part of overflow two. You will come in here, come and stand in front here. Uh, no, no, not main auditorium, sorry, not overflow one. The main auditorium and then half of overflow two. Allow them to come here. Overflow one, move to your projector stand, please. The remaining part of overflow two and the, those standing at the roadside, you can move to the projector stand. Overflow three, all of you trusting God for healing, please move to your projector stand. We have about 10, 15 minutes to do this very quickly. While we are doing that, ushers and uh, I, I don't know, whatever, whoever needs to help them, submit your prayer requests very quickly. If you have your prayer requests, you are coming out here for healing, come. Come. There is a God that heals. Please, if you have your prayer request, you can lift it up, write it very quickly. No, no, the ushers will collect it. Ushers. And, and then if, if there are not many, PR department can help them. Let's make it snappy or any other department can help them. Let's, let's make it very... We're going to make it very fast. Please and please let there be orderliness once you have been prayed for. We may not have time to take testimonies. We are just going to pray very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see. Um, Ejimi, Ejimi and Benga, overflow three. Two of you can go to overflow three. Um, let's see. Pastor Alpha and promise overflow one outside pastor Femi and Kenny overflow two let's do it like that I'll, I'll pray I'll pray for the ones here by myself hallelujah let's pray together in the name of Jesus everybody say amen, amen. father we declare corporately that your healing power will begin to flow heal the sick deliver the oppressed and in the name of Jesus, bring yourself glory by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Please make sure while we are praying, the ushers also come to these people in front so that they can have it. We'll be very, very fast so that we we'll finish on time. Thank you, Jesus. You're the name above every other name. Hail Yahweh. Great.
lift up our hands. Please stretch your hands here, everyone. I hope the requests are all here. If you are yet to submit yours, just wave it and someone should reach you. Please stretch your hands here and begin to prophesy. It's not a ritual. Declare that everything I've dropped here in the name of Jesus becomes an answered prayer. Please, ushers, make sure. Make sure that we have everyone's request here. Those online connect by faith and praying now. Make sure you are praying. Prophesy. Are you praying? Father, I believe. I believe. If the devil didn't stop your request from getting here, he will not stop it from being answered. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be miracles. Sharp krakato shigadibala. Zebra teka teka te proto superabash. And teka toko to soto parakato shepre teka desh. Kalabara laba senya laba laba. I anoint this request. I anoint them in the name of Jesus. I anoint them by the power of the Holy Ghost. I anoint them in the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders, breakthroughs, impossible situations. Turn things around, oh God. You have declared that you are turning things around. Turn around everyone's captivity. Turn around everyone's captivity. Let there be testimonies. Break the spirit of delay. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Every time we do this, we do this one as instructed. And then number two, because it's an opportunity to have everyone's desire and everyone's request here. Father, I stand upon these requests by faith. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Lord, these requests are a representation of the needs of your people. I stand, oh God, in the name of Jesus on their behalf. And I cry, let fire fall upon this request. And I prophesy to you on account of this request that the Egyptians you see today in the name that is above all names may you see them no more forever I say it again that the Egyptians you see today may you see them no more forever some of you before this month is over you will return with strange testimonies it's still two days or a day or so to the end of the month between now and even tomorrow May you return with strange testimonies. Whoever must be judged for this prayer to be answered, may it be so. Whoever must receive a conviction about you between tonight and tomorrow or till whenever for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Put your hands together for Jesus. Lift your hands to receive the prophetic word now. We're rounding up. The miracle service is not complete if you don't receive a prophetic word. Prophecy is powerful. It's powerful. It creates I release testimonies to your life. Let me say it again because many of you didn't believe it. I release testimonies to your life. 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 To your life. The key that you need to open the door for the next level may it be handed it over to you in the spirit the kind of favor that you will need to testify in the name of Jesus 
May the God that gives favor to men grant you favor. In the name of Jesus. For those in need of restoration, I prophesy, receive restoration. For those in need of an urgent miracle, a miracle that has to happen on time, otherwise it will cost you i stretch my hands in the name that is above all names let it happen to you even within 24 hours let there be that miracle. for those who have never had an opportunity to laugh every time you want to laugh something comes that must force you to cry i announce to you the season of your laughter begins tonight where you have been despised I place an anointing upon you and tonight I call you Beulah and Hephzibah in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here in ministry and things are not working you are doing your best but it's just not working receive the grace to begin to walk in a greater dimension of signs and wonders anyone here in business in the name of Jesus you are entering the season of your best days from now anyone here trusting God for a job for you or for your loved ones between now and the next miracle service return with your testimony return with your testimony return with your testimony every challenge plaguing your family not just you a family thing everyone is crying from it could be patterns could be whatever it is I stretch my hands right now and in the name that is above all names I bring those patterns to an end now for those trusting God for financial miracles your miracle the area you are trusting God is directly in the area of finances I agree with you and I release my faith May the God that prospers men surprise you. Everyone here called barren or standing in for any barren person, return as a mother of joyful children. The anointing that makes things work, the grace for performance, I release that grace upon your life. Everything that is upon your hand now, I command it to work. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I announce to you, let July, from July 1st to July 31st, may it be named a month of strange miracles, strange wonders, strange miracles, strange wonders, strange miracles, strange wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, for some of you, as you sleep, may my God show you the secrets of your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every area where you are trusting God to give you divine direction, in the name of Jesus, every spiritual mechanism that God can use to communicate to you, I declare that let it be so for you. Revelation after revelation. Finally, whoever needs to arise and help you. They already have the capacity. All they need is the willingness. I pray for you. Let me tell you, breakthrough is very easy when your helper likes you. Your helper has the means, but he needs to have the heart. Some have the heart, but they don't have the means. You need both. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. That any man and woman positioned around you that has the ability to help you. I pray that God will put it in their hearts to help you. I speak over your life a new level of spiritual encounters. I say it again, a new level of spiritual encounters. For some of you, I'm holding my Bible as a prophetic act. Because some of you have divorced this book. Not willingly, but by reason of the operation of spirit. The only time you open your Bible is in church or koinonia. 
right now fall in love with this Bible fall in love with the Word of God an appetite for the Word of God I release upon you every kind of spiritual laziness you say I wake up to pray by 12 and sleep till 8 in the morning or you get up to pray and five minutes you are snoring back it's an attack I curse that spirit over your life fresh fire upon your prayer altar in the name of Jesus Christ we declare peace over Nigeria we declare peace over the north we declare peace over Plateau State. We declare peace over Kaduna State. We declare peace over Zaria. Specifically for Zaria, we fortify the spiritual borders of this city. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that no orchestration of darkness will arise to disrupt the peace and serenity of the people. May the angels of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, secure the borders of this city. Secure the borders of the north. And we pray that the perpetrators of wickedness be judged by God in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are here and you need Jesus desperately. Keep standing please. You need Jesus desperately, desperately. You're saying, man of God, I need Jesus as a matter of urgency. I have seen the value. I have seen the usefulness of Jesus in my life. Hitherto, every time I hear about Jesus, I, I resent him. I scorn and laugh at those who talk about him. But from tonight's meeting, the Holy Spirit has convicted me. And I testify. And with all humility, I declare that I need him second category of people man of God I love Jesus with all my heart but I know that I need a strengthening in my spiritual life things have gone haywire if God does not help me there will be no way out for me you belong to these two categories overflow one overflow two main auditorium I'd like you to walk out here quickly overflow three I'd like you to run to your projector stand very quickly I'm counting one to five and we're done one God bless you appreciate them koinonia they are coming two you're still indecisive it's not good for your destiny jesus i love you i want to make a genuine decision for you three please if they are coming from other overflows clear the way for them you are running to jesus don't be ashamed no man condemns you you are before his throne of grace to obtain mercy to obtain grace we are all products of his mercy and grace four please come quickly quickly double up Apostle, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them. Join them very quickly. I remember coming out for an altar call, but I, I honestly don't know the name of what I'm doing now. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Jesus said, ye must be born again. Salvation is non-negotiable. Listen, let me encourage everyone. Koinonia is not the only platform for genuine salvation. The first mission of this ministry is massive salvation of souls. We must seek and save the lost. Not just save the lost when they come to us. We must seek them. Are we together? Because many of them may not be in a position ordinarily where they can receive salvation. We seek them through intercession. We seek them by engaging them in the conversation that leads them to Christ. God bless you. Lift your hands, all of you. Some of you are crying. You are standing before the Lord. Honestly, the Bible says, whoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Say this loud after me. You are making a confession to the God of heaven. Say, Jesus. Say it again. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. That you are the Son of God. Tonight, I declare that I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my destiny therefore I declare that you are my Lord 
you are my savior you are my king i hand over my life and everything about me to you and to your lordship i receive eternal life i receive the spirit of god and i declare from today until forever i belong to jesus i declare that i'm a child of god the grace to walk in victory is mine amen keep your hands lifted jesus thank you father we give you all the glory for drawing these ones no man can come to you except you draw them i pray that the grace that keeps men let that grace keep these ones the grace that lifts men let that grace lift them the grace that secures them let that grace secure them in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that the grace to walk in victory be given to you you will move forward ever and backward never in jesus name i pray congratulations thank you so much for this bold decision please i'd like you to follow this gentleman waving his hands just follow them in concert all of you there'll be a group of people to just talk and pray with you very quickly all of you god bless you let's honor them let's appreciate them hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching